right, this is the Hybrid B4000 Mark 6. This is rated at 2 by 2000 watt RMS power amplifier. Right, in this video I'm going to unbox it, I'll show you what you get, and I'll also show you how to connect it up. Okay, it comes with this power on power cable here it is looks very heavy duty and just showing you what you're in for this is more on the cheaper side why i say that is if you just have a look at the construction i mean here the uh, cab tire should be inside there because it's just, you can see that the person who made this cable has cut this too short so this uh, jacket should have been in there so that this clasps onto the black jacket so just to give you an idea you know don't expect top of the range stuff the attempt of hybrid as i understand it is to give you good stuff at a very affordable price but things like that you know how i noticed it i could see it there um things like that bother me all right so i'll have to fix that all right now so this is the amp itself uh it comes with some operating manuals this is a first i've actually never seen this before you've got two african languages here you've got zulu and koza and this is very impressive and well done here is the English manual and then also the Afrikaans manual. So this is definitely for the South African market. Okay, a very detailed manual. Everything you need to know is here. Explaining how to connect up, what the LEDs do and so forth. Right, I'm just going to show you the amp. On the front you can see there's the faceplate, there's a little LCD screen. You've got your two volume knobs. You've got the protect LEDs, the limit and your on and your signal level. You'll see the signal LEDs activate after the signal reaches 100 millivolts. Right, having a look at the side, just giving you the depth of this amp. The depth is 38.3 centimeters. Right at the back, you can see the extensive heat sinking there. A lot of vents, forced air cooling. Uh, this has a variable speed fan, meaning the higher you load it, the faster the fan is going to rotate. Right, you can see the power on, this is the connector and you twist like that. Uh, there's the fuse, right, for your interest. It says 20 amp fuse, although this happens to be a 25 amp. Right, the fuse, although it says on the faceplate 20 amps, the amplifier came fitted with a fast blow 25 amp 250 volt fuse. So even though it does say 20 amps, this is what came with the brand new amp. The manual describes the fuse action, saying that if the fuse does blow, Rather just take it to repair center because that is the last case scenario, meaning that they think the amp is probably defective if the fuse blows. Never put a higher amp fuse than what is already here and never short out the fuse with a copper link or a wire. Right, if you have a look underneath, you can see these rubber feet and they are screwed in to the chassis. All right, just having a look inside. Right, you can see the copper toroid. Uh, this is great. Right, you can see the copper toroid, and you can see there's all the uh, capacitors, the forced air cooling, the uh, output amplification stage, the protection section. Here you've got the relays to cut out, uh, the CTs to probably measure the overcurrent condition if you short out the uh, speaker cables, but I'm just guessing, I'm not entirely sure. And what you'll notice is this amp is completely modular, which is a good design. If you look at it, you've got the toroid, then you've got the regulation of the power, then you've got the output amplification, here you've got the protection circuit, there you've got the little volume control and LCD, so everything is modular. So I'm expecting that to repair this amp should not be very expensive. Right, it's my guess that this is left and right channel, so that's probably one channel and that's probably the other channel. You can't see the FETs, they're underneath here, looking at 4, 8, 12 FETs, and underneath here, I'm guessing there's another 4, 8, 12 MOSFETs. Right, this amp comes with a one-year warranty, so there's no good reason why you should be opening it. To close the amp, you'll notice there's a lip over there which needs to slide in, so you're going to have to come and slide that in.
Right, so it's three screws there, uh, three on the side, slightly different heads, and three on the side there, and one over there. Right, just measuring the ambient noise of the amp when it's on. So you switch it on, and let's just take a SPL measurement of the noise. And usually power amps are quite noisy, uh, they almost sound like servers, and as you can see, It is very quiet and the reason why is if you can see there it says 25 degrees on the LCD so as the amp gets loaded and it starts uh, working hard the fans will speed up and the fan noise will increase however you still won't hear it because if these were loaded uh, if these channels were working very hard the music would uh, be louder than the fan noise so there you go an improvement in the noise Right, just comparing it to one of the older generation amps, you can hear it's much noisier, these amps. Right, so you can hear the forced air cooling, the fan on full speed all the time, much noisier. When you've got a group of these amps, it actually becomes noisy. So I do like the fact that they've used the variable speed fans, which is also present on some high-end amplifiers as well. Right, having a close-up look at the back, you can see that this is partitioned into two sections. See the top row is to do with channel A and the bottom row is to do with channel B. So everything on the top is with reference to channel A. So this is the speaker output. So if you're going to connect your speaker, your sub, whatever speaker you're using, you'll connect it over there and there you go, you use the SpeakCon cable. Now the signal, the input signal from your music source needs to come in here. Right, so this is your signal and maybe that's coming from a mixer. For example here is a crossover and I will then have connected from, maybe it's on the low frequency and you can see the output from your crossover going into the input to your amp. Then the signal is amplified and it comes out via your speaker cable here. Maybe you don't use a crossover and you use an audio interface. So here I have an M-Track 2x2M. This happens to be made by M-Audio. So all I do is from the output of the M-Audio there it says left and right. And I plug in the jack and that needs to go into the amplifier at the input. There you go. So you can call channel A left and channel B right if you like. So it is from the laptop to the audio interface, from the audio interface, the signal, audio signal, analog audio signal coming to the input gets amplified and goes to your speaker. And lastly, if you are just using a media player or maybe you just have still use CDs and you need to connect from an RCA output, well there you go, yeah I've got a hybrid media player and there it goes from the output straight into the input. So you can also connect it like this, straight from the media player into the channel A and then obviously you will do the same for channel, the right channel going into channel B. Now if you're wondering what this link is, okay if you've got more than one amp and you want to uh, daisy chain the signal, so let me show you what that means. Right, so there is my crossover and the signal is coming out into the amp but now I want to use the same signal into another amp. Well that's what the link A is for. So in this case what I could do is daisy chain it. What that means is that I take that same signal, so this is these two wires are actually the same. Pin 1 and pin 1 are the same. Pin 2, 2. Right, so now I can connect this additional XLR to another amp. Right, so here I've brought another amplifier. Now if you've got the signal coming from your audio source, in this case it just happens to be a crossover, and now it comes into the power amplifier, but now you want to have another amp maybe for your uh, monitors, or maybe for a different set of speakers, but you want the same audio signal. There you can see I'm linking from there to my other amp, which means that this is the exact same signal as this wire, and this is called daisy chaining. As you can see, it's like a chain, but they all share the same signal. Now getting back to the back plate, you can see this is the input signal for channel A. So whatever you do to channel A, you'll do to channel B if you're going to have this amp in stereo mode. Stereo mode means that each channel is independent from the other, which means that when you adjust the volume knobs on the front of the amplifier, you are adjusting volume A for channel A and volume B for channel B. And that's what that stands for. ST is for stereo, means each channel operates independently. But sometimes we don't want that and we want to have it in parallel or bridged. Now I'll quickly explain to you what the difference is. Bridged means that the amp runs as one channel. So it's like taking the two channels 
and adding the power together but then you only have one signal output so some people would then connect their speakers in parallel and that unfortunately does drop the ohmerage now there is a limit on this amplifier this amplifier wants no less than eight ohms even in bridge mode so just be careful of that and i will explain that i do have a video explaining the difference between parallel and bridge mode so you can welcome to watch that now when you connect it in bridge mode the way you set out the input here is different and also the way you control the volume is also different right now in the manual they've got a very detailed diagram here showing you the connections now as i said the bridge is considerably different to the stereo mode and that is why i'm spending so much time on it right the input comes in from your mixer so there's no change there but what do you notice you see they're doing nothing here on input b which means that for when you uh, use the amp in the bridge mode you only connect the source the signal the audio signal to your channel a then look at the output the speaker on output can you see here you're only using one of these connectors so there it is however you are now needing to wire your speak on a little bit differently and that is why i'm showing you the corner here the diagram with this uh, different connection right now traditionally you would normally use the one plus for the positive of maybe one speaker and the one minus for the negative of one speaker but if you have a look at what they're saying here, it says speaker positive to pin one plus right so that's one lead of your woofer and then can see it says there pin one minus not connected and then it says there's speaker negative to pin two plus so what you're doing is because it's in a bridge mode you are trying to get the signal from both channels of the amp and that is why it says one plus and two plus so when you're using the amp in bridge mode please make sure you wire your terminals correctly so that means that you're also going to have to wire this correctly see look here so instead of using one plus and one negative you're now just using one plus and two plus so that is your positive going to your subwoofer and that is your negative going to your subwoofer can you see speaker negative to pin two plus right so now you can see that you actually wire your uh, cable differently and the panel mount connector now you'll also see that the wattage is much higher when you connect the amp in this format so as you can see that when it's in bridge mode you can squeeze out 3600 watts between those two wires meaning you can now get a very high uh, power for one monoblock but the amp becomes a monoblock so it's no longer stereo and what a lot of people do is they'll connect their two subwoofers in parallel which unfortunately does drop the ohmage so you can see there's the ohmage at four ohms although they, they they do say that they prefer you to run it at eight ohms but so that's that 3600 watts and this is for the b400 and you can see here if you want to see their specs if you run it in stereo at four ohms there's the 2000 watts per channel and that is how they are getting their b4000 number because you can see there it says 2000 watts per channel although the amp is mostly stable as they say in the manual they prefer an 8 ohm load so that is uh, for me the most reasonable measure of the amp 1200 watts per channel so looking at 2400 watts rms at 8 ohms and that's the the spec that i can uh, can count on this unfortunately look i don't want to get into arguments about this but when you run uh, speakers at 4 ohms it does change the sound because what you're doing you're increasing the current somewhat you're dropping the resistance and therefore you're increasing the current to squeeze out that uh, higher wattage uh, but it does change the way the sound stage is in the room okay so moving on right to connect this in bridge mode there comes your signal input you shift that to br mode bridge and now you'll need your speak on connected to the uh output there but keeping in mind remember i told you this has to be wired on one plus and two plus otherwise it won't work so this is to be rewired as i've explained now on the front of the amp you control the volume as follows right so to control the audio signal you just use channel a this becomes a dead knob nothing it doesn't do anything and this will be able to control the amp as a mono block that is how the bridge mode functions and it is significantly different to the stereo or parallel mode i'm now going to quickly go through the amp i'm going to show you it being on i'm just going to quickly summarize the stereo and the parallel and then i'm going to connect it up right so starting with the stereo mode that is flipped to the top uh the uh channel a and channel b speakers there i want to get the outputs there we go so that's channel a channel b 
and then your signal for channel A, channel B, and both these work independently. The front volume knobs, you'll do channel A for channel A's volume and channel B for channel B's volume. Right, so that is the stereo mode. Right, now something I want to bring to your attention now that we've discussed the bridge mode. If you look closely here, you can see that it says stereo or parallel. It says one plus positive A, one minus negative A. But then it says two plus positive A and two minus negative B. So what they're saying is that from one connector, there you go, you can actually feed channel A and B while in the stereo or parallel mode. So what that means is that even though the two channels are still independent from each other, you're still going to get this uh, channel A signal here and channel B signal here. You're still going to use channel A volume knob on the front for channel A and channel B's volume knob for channel B. But you can use a four core cable and that means that you can actually connect two speakers to one speaker. So it'll be one plus one minus, that is channel A speaker, so maybe your one sub, and two plus two minus for your other sub. They are not bridged. It is not a bridge mode. It's just for ease of connecting. So it means that you can now use one speak on cable and connector with a four core cable. And then you can now uh, have less wiring to your speaker. So instead of having two independent cables. So what they've done is they've basically just shifted this channel or made it available. It's still available here, but they've just made it also available here on the unused pins of two plus and two minus. It's not a bridge mode. It's just for ease of connecting. And the last format that I want to discuss is parallel. Now this is quite useful, especially for subs. Sometimes you find the left and right signal are a little bit different and you want to make sure that the output is matched, meaning that whatever's coming out in channel A must come out in channel B. So it's, it's not really a mono, but what it is, is it's just taking a, a single signal. So that means you can do away with channel B's audio signal and it means that you've now told the amp that whatever comes in at channel A must be amplified for both channels, which now means that channel A and channel B get their audio signal from channel A. So channel B is now matched to channel A. It still does not mean they're bridged. Uh, the volume is still independent, meaning you still change volume, uh, channel A's volume with channel A's volume knob and channel B's volume with channel B's volume knob on the front of the amp. But what you're saying is that they must just both use signal A from the mixer or the crossover. And that's very good for subs because you might have a crossover and it's got a single sub output. Well, there you go. Now in that layout, you can see that the sub, which is probably already coming in in a mono signal, can now be fed directly for both channels. So you don't have to daisy chain channel A into channel B. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, just for the purposes of this video, I've just set it up quickly. There's my laptop. My audio signal is coming from my laptop digitally via my audio interface. From my audio interface, it's going into this crossover. I've set it to the subwoofer function. I've put it on parallel, which means both channels will now have the same signal, although independently controlled. Remember, parallel means they share the same signal, but if I want to control the volume of volume B, I use this knob, and if I want to control the volume of volume A, I use this knob. All right, for your interest, this is a what's called a dual compression chamber. It was originally designed by Fane Acoustics, and uh, each one of these Colossus speakers, this is a 15 inch, and they're rated at 800 watts RMS per sub. All right, so from the amp speak on outputs to the speaker, there you can see I've got my left and right channel, or my A and B, and now I'm gonna switch on the amp and just do a quick test. Right, when I turn it on, if you notice, the lights dimmed a little bit there in the room here. That is the inrush current feeding into that toroidal transformer. Right, so you can see it's got channel A, channel B. It says 41C. 41C, that is the degree centigrade. And if you're wondering what 00 and 00, that is the volume. So you see, if I increase the volume, say you put it here at 50%, uh, that's 20. So the maximum is 40. So half of 40 is 20. There you can see 20, 21. If you look there, you can see it says 20 and 20, but if you look here, you can see that this almost hasn't been put on correctly, or this is not quite calibrated to that. You can see I feel like I almost need to pull this off and maybe put this on correctly. Let's see. 
So that's just giving you an idea that the digital display is very useful, but if you're looking at just the analog, it's a little bit off there. Then it says AC in. I know the voltage is not 235, so I'll just demonstrate that uh, little inaccuracy for you. Okay, here's my multimeter, and I'm just going to insert this here, measuring the positive, uh, the AC voltage. And you can see there, it's actually closer to 229, 228. And how I know that there's a problem here, because uh, this, uh, my uh, power supply that's actually feeding this uh, studio of mine is actually on a, a big UPS. And the UPS is saying it's 229 volts. You can see my meter is saying 228. But look at the hybrid amp, it says 235. So actually that's incorrect. Now, um, I'm not upset about it. I'm just showing you that you're getting the features, but don't expect pinpoint accuracy with a hybrid uh, amp as you can see already i've shown you that these are not exactly uh, calibrated to that and the the voltage is uh, one or two percent off the actual displayed amount all right moving on right so now i've uh, fed in a signal there you can see it says signal and you can see the signal uh, hopping up and down there and uh, i'm going to show you how to set this now with a power amplifier, what you do is you don't use this really as your volume control. Uh, you should have, have this almost at 100%. So you, you actually set this to almost maximum. Uh, you could even have it at maximum and try and balance these. You see it says 33, uh, so there's 34 and 34. And I just want to show you where I'm adjusting the volume now that the amp is set. My uh, audio interface. So this is the, the place where if you want to make it softer, you do it here. And if you want to make it louder, you do it here. And the point is, is that an amp, a special power amp, should almost be set to like 95 or 100%. And you can see there, um, it's starting to go a little bit yellow, and that would mean you're now overdriving the amp. And if you can see the yellow's coming on a little bit there, uh, that would mean it's, uh, you're actually going into overdrive. And you don't want to overdrive the input stage of the amp, and that is why you set the volt volume here, and then that means I'm now actually bringing the amp into distortion. You see, once I've got those yellows uh, flickering like that, I'm actually distorting the signal. So you can see there, I'm actually overloading the amp. So I mustn't have those yellows going all the time. Uh, you actually got to reduce the volume. So you can see there it's set. That's how it should be. Now, obviously, if that's too powerful for your speakers, it's fine. You can reduce these a little bit. The point they're making is don't have it like this. You see here, I've got the volume at maximum and here I've got it half. No, that's the wrong way around. If you wanted to uh, set the volume, rather reduce that and increase that to maximum. And then you're not overdriving the input stage of the amplifier. So you see there it's safe. That's a safe situation. And if it's too loud for your speakers, now, now you can reduce these a little bit. But don't reduce these if you haven't reduced that. Rather reduce that uh, because you'll just end up overdriving the input stage. All right. If it's still too loud, reduce it some more. And if it's still too large, oh, you can reduce these. But the point I'm trying to make is don't have it sitting here on the yellow, hitting the limit all the time because you're actually having it, you're amplifying a distorted signal then. All right. So what do I think of this app? Personally, I don't think you're going to get anything better for this price point. The construction is solid. These are reliable amps. They can work for hours and hours. It's got a nice little LCD interface. What I don't like is this generation have done away with the active crossover that was built into the earlier generation of the hybrids. Although that crossover was not the best crossover. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. All right, so this is an older generation one. Still had the posts over here. All right, so what, what am I talking about? You see there is an active filter. There's a low pass, a bypass, meaning no filter and a high pass. Um, why I like this is, especially if you were not using the amp for subs, then you would have it on high pass. And I thought this was very useful. In terms of the sub, uh, using it for the low pass, this wasn't very well done at all. A lot of the upper frequencies came through. So this is probably a second order filter, whereas a crossover gives you usually a fourth order order filter but nevertheless i feel like this is missed out and they could have just kept that high pass option especially if you're not going to use the amp for subs uh, the sensitivity they used to have uh, this was if your input stage from your uh, audio interface was not very large you could almost give it an extra amplification or extra boost and then here it's got the ground on and off this is present on the new models and what this is for and i never told you on the new model is that if you've got a, a group of amps and you start to pick up a bit of hum coming through the signal uh, you can just actually isolate or lift the earth meaning the earths are no longer shared across all the amps all right so that is already that is still present on the new versions okay so what do i think of this hybrid amp 
Personally, I don't think you're going to get better value for money. You're looking at a solid contender and a rugged unit, meaning that uh, this can take a bit of a beating. It is strong. It is neat does the job and that is one of the reasons why I use this for my sub and also this is a South African company. So you're probably wondering all this talk and how does it sound? Well you'll have to tune in for another review. Uh, unfortunately I've run out of time. I have been playing this new model on my subwoofer and it's been sounding good. Personally I'd have to listen to it for a while with a variety of different speakers so that'll be upcoming in the coming weeks. Bye bye.